was buried beneath my shame Who could carry that kind of weight It was my too Till I met I was breathing but not alive All my failures I tried to hide It was my too Till I may You sing, you call my name You call my name Sing the old made new. The old made new. Oh, yes, Jesus. Jesus, when I met you. shelter I was an orphan and you call me a citizen of heaven when I was broken you were my healing your love is here that I'm breathing I have a future my eyes are open it's when you call my name oh yes and I ran out of that grave Into your glorious day. 
these bones will sing great are you Lord and all the earth will shout your praise our hearts will cry these bones will sing great are you It's Mother's Day, the day that we celebrate our moms. And it's important to celebrate our moms because if it wasn't for our moms, we would not be here. There are two kids who decided to honor their mom on Mother's Day by fixing her breakfast. They said, Mom, stay in bed, we've got this. Nine pots, two skillets, four large bowls, 11 spoons, five measuring cups, four aprons, and one whole roll of paper towels later. Mom said, that was the best jello I ever had. Well, today we're continuing our series on questions. And the question today is how to have a healthy home. What are the most important things to have in our homes that will impact our homes in the most positive and lasting way? Is it cleanliness, organization, meals, activities, vacations, nice furniture, cars, folded laundry, a dog? All those things are important. But what makes for a healthy home? Paul the Apostle in 1 Corinthians chapter 12 and 13 gave a lot of good things that we're to have in our lives, in our church, and in our homes. And he concludes chapter 13 with the three most important things. He says this, three things will last forever, faith, hope, and love. And the greatest of these is love. And any relationship, especially in the home, the most important things to have are faith, hope, 
and love. We need these things, and without these things, our home will not be a healthy home. So this Mother's Day, because it's Mother's Day, I've asked three ladies to kind of share on what these words mean to them. First, Donna's going to share about faith. Today I've been asked to talk about faith in the home. The scripture tells us that faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. Sometimes with our family, we hope for the best and we don't always see the evidence right away, but we know it will with God's help. No home is perfect, but we do our best with God's help. As moms, we do our best to nurture our children in the ways of the Lord. I remember growing up as a child, seeing my dad come home from work. He would sit in the big easy recliner while mom was finishing up dinner, and he, um, he would sit there and read God's word. And I was, as a child, watching all that. Then, later in the evenings before bedtime, our parents would gather us together, and we would have family devotions. We would discuss the scriptures. Our parents would ask us questions about what we were reading so we could apply it to our lives. We learned to trust God when times were difficult. It was neat to see how God always provided for our family. When I got older and got married, we started each morning off with devotions at the breakfast table. It's better than Wheaties. It starts our day off on the right path. Devotions could be anything from reading God's Word, a chapter maybe, or a devotional book, or printing something off the internet from a favorite Bible teacher. Sometimes if there were sermon notes from Sunday's sermon, we would reread those and look up the scriptures and discuss the questions and how we could apply those to our everyday life. It's good if you have children to ask questions and discuss what they're learning in Sunday school and children's church. Sing with them while you are riding, riding the car songs about the Lord. When your family is in a crisis situation, or maybe there's difficult situations, um, difficult de decisions to be made for your family, pray together with those about those things. See and watch God's hand move in these situations. On the drive to school, have your children pray for their teachers and their classmates. Or if you're going to church, pray for the pastor that God would anoint him and lost souls would be saved and come to know Jesus as their Lord and Savior. It sure beats quarreling or maybe fighting in the car. The scriptures teach us not to let the sun go down on our anger's wrath. If you have an is issue with another family member, have a time out, have a family meeting, and try to resolve those issues. Don't let them build up. Always end each session with a hug or a kiss. Be careful of what you allow in your home. Little people and others are watching. Is there internet access with no filters or accountability? And that doesn't, it matters, doesn't matter whether you've got children in the home or a husband or wife, there always needs to be accountability. Do you ever turn on Christian television in your home and watch things that are uplifting? Or is it only movies and filth from Hollywood and the world that can drag your family down? No family is perfect, but we ask God to guide our family. And with his help, things will go better. Trust God with your family and have faith in Him. Thank you, Donna. Faith is the foundation of a healthy home. The most important thing parents can do for their kids is to lead their children into a relationship with Jesus Christ and to help them grow in that relationship with God and their understanding of the Bible. Going hand in hand with this is prayer to pray for our spouses, to pray for our kids. These things are so important. This instills faith in the home. 
but also we must live out our faith. Donna gave the example of her father, how she saw her father reading the word of God. Others hear their parents praying on their knees in their rooms. Living our fa out our faith in the home is putting our trust in God for our families. Proverbs states, train up a child in the way he should go and when he is old, he will not depart from it. It's amazing how our kids become like us. They may say, I don't want to be my parents, but when they grow up, they actually have a lot of our same characteristics. The patterns you set in your home will be repeated. Some of our patterns are bad, but we need to make sure that we have a pattern of faith in the home so our kids repeat this when they are older. God's word will accomplish what he sent it to accomplish, and we need to have faith in God for that. So first we have faith. It's the foundation. Next is hope. And I've asked Jasmine Worley, a young lady in our church, to speak on hope. Okay, so hi, my name is Jasmine, and I'm going to be doing um, a little overview of what the meaning of hope means. So in the Bible, it talks about faith, love, and hope. And I feel like so many of us get so caught up in thinking hope as in something we hope for, like oh, I hope for a better car insurance, oh, I hope for this, I hope for that. But I feel like we forget the true meaning of having hope, especially in the foundation of our home. Hope is something that kind of pulls everything together. When we put our hope in God alone, we can see that our house, when it's built upon a rock, that it's not gonna move and God is that rock. But when we build our house, let's say on the sand by the ocean, when you don't have that firm hope right there and you don't have that trust in him, um, it easily can just be shifted away by sin and destruction of the enemy. So I feel like hope is something so important that even I forget how much it takes to have hope in God and how important it is to have hope in him. And one verse that stuck out to me a little bit, because I feel like hope kind of goes along with having a goal in mind. So like maybe I hope for my relationship with God to grow deeper. So I feel like Proverbs 12, 1 says, the one who loves discipline loves knowledge, but the one who hates correction is stupid. I feel like it goes straight forward. I feel like he was not sugarcoating it at all. Um, but it just tells you straight up right there that having hope is more than just putting your faith in God. It's okay, Lord, I'm going to let you give me discipline and I'm going to live by that discipline and having that firm home of having hope, knowing that God is in control of your house. God is in control of how you live and how you um, go about your day. And a, another one, I feel like, because it's Mother's Day coming up, for Proverbs 12, 4, a wife of a noble character is her husband's crown, but a wife who care, causes shame is like rottenness in his bones. So I feel like having hope, especially as a woman of God, because of Mother's Day is so important because having that hope right there is going to help you lead into a home that's going to be for God and be in line of God. And especially can go for men of God who are single, who are taking that role as a mother figure for their children. I feel like they should be just as important. And I feel like hope is something that kind of just connects us together. And it's a goal of you desire something. But sometimes we desire the wrong things in hope. We desire the worldly things. We desire our own needs. But we forget that our needs are not as important as God's. God's needs for us are what is important. And his desires for our life are going to lead us into hopefully eternity with him. And so when we stay devoted, he blesses us with that hope that we can put our trust in him. So, yeah, thank you. Hope is so important. Thank you, Jasmine, for sharing about that. A famous doctor, Emil Bruner, said, what oxygen is for the lungs, such as hope for the meaning of human life. Take oxygen away and death occurs through suffocation. Take hope away and humanity is constricted through lack of breath, despair, and hopelessness. People need hope. Kids need hope. It gives them the motivation to move forward, to achieve more, to look with optimism to the future. With all the negativity in our society, 
it's important that families have hope. And that hope primarily comes from a relationship with God, knowing that God will work all things together for our good, knowing that God has plans to prosper us and not to harm us, plans to give us a hope and a future. And we need to speak this into our families. This is life, and it encourages the soul. It's breath, and it's, it's life to them. And it will give them encouragement to move on in this world. Optimism is the faith that leads to achievement. Nothing can be done without hope and confidence. First there's faith, then there's hope, and finally it mentions love, probably the most important of the three. And I've asked Pastor Jenny Forrest, our children's pastor, to share on love. She temporarily is working on Sundays. She's going to have her schedule changed shortly and she'll be off on Sundays for the rest of the year. So I have her on video. So here's Jenny sharing on love. Love in the home. What does it mean to me? Well, a household can't function without love. A household without love isn't a home. Love is what makes a household a home, you know? So love is a very, very important part of, of a family life. And everybody, you know, feels love differently and everybody experiences love differently. So it's really hard to vocalize or to put into words what it looks like. But um, I can tell you, you know, I can give you a different examples. Like, for example, my, my husband feels like we are filled with love when we're all watching movies together and it's something we all enjoy together. Um, you know, and I feel love when we're playing family game night and we, you know, put board games out and we put all our electronics away and we're just, you know, having a good time together as a family or, you know, spending quality time together. It's, it's, there's so many different ways to express love. And so, you know, to really know what each person um, receives, how they receive love, like putting a note in their lunchbox or something, or if you children, if you uh, know that your mom wants the dishes done before she gets home, um, to make sure that you do that, that might be a way that she feels love. You know, make sure everybody's doing their part and participating together, and so that way everyone feels heard and everyone um, feels appreciated. That's really important. I'll give you an example of love for me, for what it feels like to me. When um, my kids were little, I used to hold them and pick them up and, and I would bounce them on my knee and I'd say, I love you, a bushel and a peck, a bushel and a peck and a hug around the neck. And then I'd give them a big hug and a kiss on the cheek and they would giggle and laugh and they thought it was fun stuff. And you know, it was something they did as they got older, I couldn't do that anymore. But when my daughter went to kids camp one year, she went into the gift shop and she saw a plaque and it's about this big, you know, and it says, I love you, a bushel and a peck and a hug around the neck. And she thought, oh, that's that's perfect for my mom and so she bought it for me like with her souvenir money she bought me a gift because it reminded her of the love I gave her when she was a child and then in turn that's sharing her love with me and so now I have it hanging up on my wall and I get to see it every day and it warms my heart and even though she's an adult now um, you know we still have that love that we share together so um, Love is very important. If you're not feeling the love in your household, then you know you can see where, where it's missing. Kind of do your part to make sure everyone feels appreciated and everyone feels, um, you know, not taken for granted, and uh, make sure that you shine your love to everyone. Thank you, Jenny. Love is selflessly serving others. Love manifests itself through the little things that we do. Quality time, personal notes, doing things for others, simple gifts. Love is more about doing than saying. It's a commitment, even through difficult circumstances, to be there for those we love. It's accepting another person with all their shortcomings. Someone once gave this definition of love. Slow to suspect, quick to trust. Slow to reprimand, quick to forbear. Slow to belittle quick to appreciate, slow to condemn, quick to justify, slow to offend, quick to defend, slow to demand, quick to give, slow to provoke, quick to conciliate, slow to hinder, quick to help, slow to resent, quick to forgive. These are so important. Love is the glue 
that holds a family together. 1 Corinthians 13, 13 says, These three will last forever, faith, hope, and love. But the greatest of these is love. So, so as we move forward, let's make sure that we have faith and hope and love in our families. And I'd like to pray for you right now. Let's pray. Lord Jesus, I thank you for everyone that's uh, joined with us today in, in the service. I pray your blessing upon them. Lord, I pray that you would fill their family, their house, their home with faith, Lord God, that they would practice those things that they need to do, Father, in relationship with you to build their faith and to build the faith of their families. Lord, I pray that the home would be filled with hope, that each member of the house would be filled with hope, knowing that you are their God, that they are part of your family, that you have a good future for them. But they would also have hope because they speak life into each other's hearts. They encourage one another and uplift one another with their words. And Lord, I also pray that these homes would be filled with your love, love that is self-sacrificing, that thinks of the other person first and puts others first and, and does things that are practical to show love one to another. Lord, Father, let our homes be filled with faith, hope, and love. In Jesus' name, amen. Next, I would like to give an opportunity to you. If you're not in relationship with God, if you have not put your faith and trust in God Almighty, I want to give you an opportunity. You can pray a prayer of commitment by inviting Jesus Christ into your life. So if you would like to put your faith and trust in God and have his hope and his love fill your hearts, pray after me. Lord Jesus, thank you for loving me. Thank you for taking the punishment for my sins upon the cross. I ask you to forgive me of my sins. I invite you to come into my life. I desire to live for you. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. If you prayed that prayer, then you are now a child of God. You're a member of God's family. And you have the hope of heaven and the hope of a good future because God promised that to you. So I encourage you, stay in relationship with God. That means talk to him every day, read his word, and attend a local church. If you're close to our church, we have services on Sundays at uh, 945 and 11 a.m. every Sunday morning. They're in person indoors with live worship, and we invite you to attend. Also, I'd like to give you some free information about your decision to live for Christ today. If you'd like me to send you some free information or have questions about your relationship with God, please call me at 661-946-7157. We have a few announcements coming up. First of all, the first Sunday in June is Graduation Sunday. And so we are going to be honoring our graduates. So if you graduate from junior high middle, or middle school, high school or a college or a trade school, please uh, contact us and let us know at 661-946-7157. Also, coming up, we have life groups starting up again. They're home groups, uh, small groups. We're going through a curriculum together as a church in the beginning. And so we'd love for you to be a part of a life group. And so please contact the church for more information about that. It's been good to be with you today. Thank you so much for being with us. Let me pray a prayer of blessing and closing over you. Let's pray. Lord Jesus, I thank you for everyone that joined with us today. I pray your blessing upon them. I pray that you would encourage them. Fill their homes with faith, hope, and love. Help them to have a wonderful week. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. God bless. Have a wonderful week.